Milí přátelé a kamarádi, pokud kamery jedou, pokud kamery jedou, nejedou, takže nejedou, ale i tak vás zdravím, já s tobou trénovat. Milí přátelé a kamarádi, ahoj. Ještě furt to nejede? Kolik? Všichni jsou ready. Jo. Jste už tak tiší jako myšky, ale ještě trošičku si stížte telefony, přátelé. Ahoj, přátelé, vítám vás všechny na další pokračování Hukách Talk Show. Jsem strašně rád, že jste tady dorazili, vidím tady spoustu známých tváří i několik nových a zrovna dneska jste dorazili na pořádnou porci německého dýmkaření, protože všechno je dneska větší, máme větší světla, víc stolu a tak, jak jste si všimli, i více hostů. Dneska za námi zavítali kamarádi z Německa a to konkrétně Moritz Oten, což je tvůrce Dímek Mouse a zároveň i tvůrce Dímek Case. Zatleskejte mu, prosím. Výborně. Pak tady máme vlastně duo, ale zároveň dva velice činné jedince sami o sobě. Další pán na holení, tady ten v tom zeleném, je Janik Palm, konkrétně s přezdívkou Kessel. Píše se to kvsel, ale oni prostě Včko považují za Ačko, mají to prostě trošku divně v tom Německu. A zrovna Janik je náš asi největší influencer v Německu, má nějakých přes 170 tisíc followerů všude možně. Dělá hlavně Instagram a dělá to 6 let a dělá to skvěle. No a pak tady máme Aljošu, Aljošu Zemelku, což je zase chlapec pod přezdívkou Hukejs. Tohle chlapce znám už mnoho let, dokonce dlí i v mé knize. Byl to první kluk, kterého jsem se snažil chasovat, když jsem byl mladý dýmkarský tvůrce a chtěl jsem nějaké kamarády, kteří těch followerů mají trošku víc než já. A Aljoša byl na mě vždycky milý a pomáhal mi i v mé tvorbě. Nemá sice tolik followerů jako Janik, ale zase má cool braille. Jo, takže nějaké ty přidané kvality tam jsou. Každopádně oba dva jsou takový vizuální tvůrci. Spíš než by psali blogy nebo dělali podcasty, oni fotí a natáčí. A fotí a natáčí skvěle. A jejich vlastně spojené síly, Aljoši a Janika, jsou vlastně dneska nejsledovanější dýmkařští tvůrci v Německu. A před rokem spolu začali dělat také YouTube kanál Aljoša Janik, kde dělají snad všechno možné, co by správný dýmkařský youtuber měl dělat, ale dělají to spolu svýma společnýma silama. A zároveň taky před rokem a něco spustili svůj vlastní projekt Case a tyhle dýmky můžete vidět zde. Dýmky Grid, ze kterých si potom budete moci i zakouřit. A zkrátka na to, kolik jim je, jsou mladší než já, dělají toho překvapivě mnoho a dělají to skvěle. Taky bych chtěl velice poděkovat nejenom, že jste přišli, ale že si to tady můžeme dneska všechno užít. Děkuji Šanty, že tady můžeme dneska natáčet za skvělý tenhle kameramanský tým, sponzorovi Kokoloko za to, že máme co si dát do toho HMS -ka. a taky českému tabáku Teo, že si tam máme co nabít. Děkujeme Ali a samozřejmě kaviáru za to, že to tady všechno můžeme pořádat a máme nějaké skvělé zázemí. Takže nyní přepnu do angličtiny, užijte si naši ať už krátkou nebo dlouhou diskuzi, vidíme, jak se kluci rozkecají a Vydržte to chviličku bez dýmek, potom jim bude spousta a spousta. So guys, now it's time to switch into English. Um, I presented you to our audience and uh, just to do it quick in English. This handsome guy is Moritz Otten, the, out, the author of Mose Hukax. Uh, yeah, uh, I had to train the, the pronunciation because uh, they had some kind of uh, troubles with uh, pronunciation in Germany. Everybody calls it Mose and now it's Mose. It's proper. It's the proper word. Then we have Yannick, Yannick Palm uh, Kessel, which is one of the greatest uh, visual stolliters about hookahs in German market. And then we have Alyosha. He is like uh, his uh, brother, his best friend, uh, you know, uh, half brother maybe. <laughs> and uh, they do the same but not the same way. They produce great photos and videos and uh, all of them uh, have their different styles 
unix style uh, it's not just about hookahs they are really into fashion and modern design and these two things with hookahs they merged into case case grid uh, it's their first model of their hookahs and they produce also accessories. And that's the thing we will talk about today. Not only about their products, but about their journeys and uh, about their approach to various hookah things you can imagine. So it's time to begin and time for me to sit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice introduction. Ah. Uh, I won't be easy on you, so no clapping will help. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Guys, uh, I called you a uh, German hookah trio. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, welcome to Prague. And you're not here for the first time. So my first question is, how do you enjoy our Czech hookah scene, especially here in Prague? Do I start? Yes. I think for the German people, especially for us, it's very nice to come here because the setups are great, the lounges are great. We've been to Russia and Russia are also very, very good lounges and setups. And in Germany we have like one, two, three places that are really good. But in, in Czech, for example in Prague, you have like many lounges that are very good. You can also have food, which is in Germany forbidden. And yeah, the scene is very nice, the setups are great, the tobacco is great, the hookah masters are great. In Germany, we don't have hookah masters. So you have uh, uh, hookah girl masters? Or what oh, do it's you have? just hookah random. <laughs> <Regular> <laughs> randoms. Hookah random guys. Yeah, yes. you yeah. can basically so you, go there and start. You can better smoke at home in Germany. Yeah, so the experience in Prague is very good every time, so I really enjoy it being here for the fourth time for me fourth this time, year. Nice. First Alexia, is uh, here in Czech Republic something you don't like in case of hookahs? No. To be honest, no. The whole experience of hookah in uh, Czech Republic and Prague is uh, great, for real. Everything is great, the setups are great, the lounges are great, especially the caviar lounge is great, so everything's great here. Also, the city is a beautiful city. Moritz, and. Uh, do you like uh, the city better than our lounges or its wives? Where is that? Uh, the city of Prague? Uh -huh. uh, I didn't see much of the city because last time we were... Drinking in, all the time. In, no, uh, <laughs> but we were in like uh, four lounges in two days and uh, to, yesterday we just arrived uh, in the evening and Go today to we were in another lounge and now we're here so I didn't see much of Prague but I will come back to Okay, you see have the city. to uh, get some time for some time for sightseeing, right? Not just who cares, enjoy the city. I already did back in the days. I like I think it was 8 years ago I did some sightseeing here and it's a beautiful Yeah, city. the subway were already here so no problem. <laughs> okay, uh, I introduced you to our Czech audience. Uh, right now, please do it uh, by yourselves, starting with Moritz. Please, Moritz, uh, just briefly tell our audience something about you. Yeah, I'm Moritz. Um, I'm 24 years old and I started Mose in 2019. And since then, I'm a hookah producer and I try my best to make the best products for the German market and also for other countries uh, in Europe and we also have customers in Hong Kong, USA, um, Australia and Canada, for example. Great, it was as short as a reel. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yannick? No. <laughs> so I'm Yannick, I'm from Germany, of course. <laughs> I'm 25 years old, I'm from Kassel, as my name says. It's basically the city, so Kassel, I'm from Kassel. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why. The, uh. But the name was already taken, so I have to I had to change it up a bit. I smoke hookah since my 17th, or well, since eight years ago. I'm 25 now. So back in 2018, I think I started the blog on Instagram. Uh, let, uh, let me stop you. What is Shisha Squad Castle? <laughs> okay, let me try to. Explain it. Back because in the day, I think it was his first account. So yeah, it's far. it's the same account, the but same. I changed the name three years ago, two years ago. I'm so I don't really remember. I think three, three years yeah. ago. Uh, back in the day, I started posting my pictures on my personal account, 
And some guy saw my pictures and said, those pictures are really great. And he was Shisha Squad Gelsenkirchen. Germany. Shisha, Shisha Squad Germany. It was the first account of Shisha Squad. Yes, the first. Franchise. Yes, there was a franchise of style. Kind of. Yes. McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> kind of McDonald's. Yeah, and he asked me if I want to start with Shisha Squad Kassel because we were about to start like new cities like Shisha Squad Frankfurt and other cities. So I said, yes, why not? Um, I started the blog and I stopped posting on my personal account and started posting on this account. So I started a bit earlier than my blog. But uh, that was the first like start with uh, Shisha Squad Castle, and over the years everybody stopped posting. I was the only one with uh, Shisha Squad Castle posting. The owner of the franchise. Yeah, yeah, everybody stopped. Every city stopped, I would say. And for me, the la the name was a bit too long, so I want something short, and uh, that's how Castle got up. Great. Okay, and the last one, yes. Alyosha. Uh, my name is Alyosha, I am 27 years old, fucking old right now, <laughs> to be honest. Um, hey, yeah. we are the same age. Really? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're the younger Fucker. one. Fucker. Um, <laughs> um, I'm smoking shisha since my 18, 18th birthday, I think. And I've started my account in 2015 or 2016, I think. I started in 2016 as well. 2016 or 2015? I'm not quite sure to be honest. I started 2016. You, um, to be precise, you both started in 2016. I oh, did my research. It's a long time ago, so... <laughs> <laughs> For a 27-year <laughs> guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, it's, it's a similar story as uh, Yannick's story. Um, I just started with some pictures on my personal Instagram, on private account, and um, yeah, I think the whole hooker branch is like a very aesthetic branch um, to to keep sh uh, to do shots and videos about it. And uh, yeah, then a friend came to me and said, "Why don't why don't you start a hooker blog with it?" And yes, that was the start of hookers. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and the bonus questions. Uh, how did you three meet each other? Well, so I can tell the story with him. The guy I knew from Gelsenkirchen who started the whole thing, I went to him when I had 1,000 followers. It was like the day I was hitting 1,000 followers, I was meeting up with him. We met at Shisha Squad Germany's home and he and a friend came over. And we actually like met earlier because we traded some tobacco. In Facebook groups, you Back know. Back in the days, like 2015 or 2014, something. You yeah. sell or made something? No, like no, it. you don't want to like buy 200 grams because it's expensive and stuff. So if you have like 10 flavors, you can say, okay, we're gonna trade 20 grams of each flavor. Here's a picture of my collection of tobacco. And he chose 10 and I chose 10. Yeah, young and modern smugglers. Yeah, yeah. and then you just uh, send it over. Smart. So we traded uh, tobacco shots and that's basically the first connection. And the first real love connection was at home in Gelsenkirchen, she says, was Germany with a friend of him. Yes. And yeah, since then we met like every every three months or something. Months. Yeah. Yeah. Then I started the brand in 2019 uh, to promote the new brand. I met Ayosha and the first hookah I made was co-branded with his blog name, Hookays. And What's the name of the hooker? Mose, Mose uh, One. Mose right? One. Uh, and Do you know it had the Mose, the one? Mose branding. The and stainless steel one. Yes, with, with, with three hoses. Three hoses, yes. yes. ports. Yeah. Um, and it was branded with Mose and hookers. And then Ayosha introduced me to Yannick, I think. So. Yeah. yeah. At the Shish, was it, was it Intertabak Dortmund? Intertabak. We Fletcher. met for the first time in Intertabak Dortmund. Mm. Yes. So best friends since 2019. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> was it earlier? It was end of 2018, I guess. 2018. Yeah, 20, end, of 2018. end of 2018. Guys, that's, that's your thing. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> it, was, it was December. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, let's go back to the very beginning. Yes. Please, all you three, describe me your first ever hookah experience. I think it was uh, with some friends in uh, yeah their their rooms and uh, we started with uh, Selbstzünder, uh, quick, quick, quick light uh, charcoals as as everybody starts. The best I think. option for every beginner. <laughs> yes. We know it right in so. Czech Republic. I think so. Um, with a regular hookah from 
Kiosk. Kiosk, like, yeah. Kiosk. Yeah, I don't know the German. We say Trafika. Trafika, yes. Like the mini markets. <laughs> the mini market, and uh, that was the beginning with Nachla. Um, pomegranate or it, uh, double apple, something like this. Strawberries, mixed fruits, also yes. very nice. With foil and uh, nobody knew what he did. So it was like very, very beginner, like beginner level. So mm. that was the first time with some guys at, a, yeah, at their home. Was when you were 10, 18, 15? Uh, 18. I started with 18, for real. The legal way. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I've ever heard of. Really? Yeah. <laughs> In Czech Republic, yes. Okay. 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 So I what was about you, uh, 15 or 16. Uh, Ooh, also, that's early. <laughs> also started with Nachla. Uh, I think it was ice apple, and oh. also with a very basic hookah. Uh, yes, but uh, nothing special. At Did home? you prepare it by yourself or yes. some? Oh. Prepared by myself because uh, I bought the hookah with a friend, and then we made everything by ourselves. For me, the first time was with my brother. I can't tell you the age because it was very, very early. But there was... Ten. <laughs> I won't tell you the age. <laughs> I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> but it was very early. Um, but the Bad real brother. start... No, very good brother. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, very best brother ever. No, really. Um, the first real start was with uh, 17. I ordered a uh, Kaya PNX 460, 480 something. Little one. Yeah, normal clay bowl and some Adalia. And Butcher. Uh, Butcher, of course. Of course. Adalia, Ener Ener no, not Energy, Cola Dragon. Yes, Cola Dragon. I know that one. And Alvaha, I don't know. Back in the days, Adalia Cola was, uh, Coke was great. Yeah. Ah, Cola, not so Sounds like great stuff. <laughs> Coke was not that good. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, and then. For the experience itself, I was smoking by myself in my room and it was really like, I took a few hits and then I fell into the bed because the nicotine was so crazy. I burned the charcoals in my room, windows uh, just closed, didn't really think about it. It was really uh, like... Uh, so the best ever first drug experience with your family? <laughs> the, the hookah one? The, with uh, 17 years old, was by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and how about your parents? Was it like a secret thing in your room, or was it like your parents already knew about the? Ah, uh, yeah, Yannick is stunned again. Okay, let's close the door. <laughs> no, no, uh, it was like like uh, I ordered it, so it was okay for them. Okay, uh, when you actually started, what kind of tobacco or equipment did you prefer that days, uh, and uh, what do you prefer now? I know it could be a big difference, but uh, try to remember and compare it with uh, today's practice. I think uh, back in the days it was a lot of uh, blonde leaf, so Virginia tobacco, and uh, yeah, the, the brands were Alwaha, Nachla, Alfacha, the OG brands in Germany, I would, I would say. And nowadays it's uh, yeah, more dark leaf, of course it's more dark leaf, and uh, yeah, nowadays it's like Blackburn, Dark Side, Must Have. Yeah, these are the and my favorite tacos. Yes. And Theo, of, of course, for sure, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah, for me it was the same. It was like clay bowl with butcher, the classic setup, I would say. And there was also like a better clay bowl, I would say. The Sapphire. Classic, yes. Not what, the <clears throat> one. <laughs> no, not the light ones, the heavy ones. Um, that were real, really nice. And then it switched over to the Kaas Apo with the... Yeah, Kaas Apo. It. It, it fitted uh, Baccia yes. back in the days. Yes. And um, then after that, it switched to the Zomo funnels. That was the first really contact with funnels. For me, it was like, I think, the Kalao Zamzaris one, the really uh, first you one. You think um, that um, cooperation with Hukak John? Yes. yes. Yeah. 80 feet 80. That was the Harmony. first time, I think, in Germany when the funnel awesome. really started to be used. So Back that was in? the first. Yeah, ever, uh, everything before a black. Yes. Yeah, 2018. When, I think. When 2018, I started. 2019. When I started to uh, was, with Mose. Oh, okay. Then yeah. the funnel came. Yes. Then I think 2020 it went over to funnel with H and D, and since then it was like the same setup. Sometimes like kind of these bowls was Grimsia UPG, but so you are more like a funnel person than a classic one. Yeah, I would say, but H and D only. I. Really enjoy HMD. Back in the day, 2018, I was smoking Tangiers with foil, and like uh, and you from didn't the butcher, recover from it. No, it was great. 
Okay, Mint was great back in the day. I still have pictures. If you scroll down to the first five pictures of my blog, I guess, last 2000. I scrolled down uh, both of your books. <laughs> you would see a picture with Tangius under the first 10. To scroll down the whole feed? A long time. Do you know how many posts I got right now? Uh, yeah, it's written on your page, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, take a guess now. Now you have to guess. Okay, Moritz. Uh, <laughs> no, I want a guess from you. want to take a guess. Just a guess. My guess, it's 1600. Okay, it's 2100. Ah, oh, I was close. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Moritz, back in the days, and more especially right now, what do you prefer? Um, back in the days, I... As I said, uh, I started with Two years Nachla, ago. but um, then I moved on to Adalia and Al Jazeera. You know it? Um, yeah, the television. <laughs> no, not the television, <laughs> but uh, there was a brand. I think it's the same company that makes True Passion now. Mm -hmm. um, I smoked that a lot, and then I also started with Dark Leaf Tobacco, and now it's mainly. Uh, the usual brands like Darkside, Must Have, Blackburn, Tail. And a bonus question for you. Which uh, hookah do you like the most except of Mose brand? Um, <coughs> it's, also, <laughs> it's also kind of a Mose impression. So. Uh, case, of course. Um, yeah. But at home I have a, a Mamai Customs a Micro and the Mamai Customs Glow. I have uh, Alpha Uka Beat. I like that one too. And travel companion. Sorry? It's your travel companion. It's a uh, really small hookah. We have a better travel hookah, but <laughs> we maybe come to that. Okay, the Motion is also a very nice brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yes. Okay. These are the. Guys, moving aside of hookah a little bit, what are your interests and hobbies besides of the hookah? Do I start? Yes. Okay. Um, one of my hobbies is uh, soccer or football, um, American football and also soccer. I'm a great fan of the soccer club Werder Bremen. I'm not quite sure if anybody knows Werder Bremen here. Werder Bremen? It's in Ulaanbaatar or Ulaanbaatar? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, nobody Where knows. Where is it based? <laughs> uh, it's based in the north of Germany, near Hamburg. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I'm a great fan of uh, the soccer team. And also I'm a great fan of the Seattle Seahawks. It's an American football team. Same for you? Yeah. For you? As I said, I was there. Ah, in Seattle? Yeah, in Seattle. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, you forgot almost everything. <laughs> everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, these uh, two hobbies, of course, and uh, yeah. Is it combined with FIFA or NFL on yes. PlayStation or Xbox? Yes, it's combined with FIFA, um, NFL not that much, or Madden NFL not that much, but FIFA and uh, of course also some video games like Call of Duty, FIFA, Okay guys, so we have FIFA here, you can challenge Alyosha after the show. <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah, that's basically it. So, so a soccer man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for me it's basically I love traveling. Uh, see some other countries, also hookah in other countries. It's very interesting. Uh, besides that, I love to uh, play games on the PC, just gaming. Uh, I love to watch esports, uh, Counter Strike, for example. I really love to watch it. And uh, besides that, I you go to bet on it also? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't bet on it. Back in the day, you could bet on it with skins, but uh, they changed up. And gym, like normal sports. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Just a little bit, but yeah. And your common thing, as I was spotting several years, uh, you have a special taste in fashion. That's also a hobby, right? <laughs> yeah. You can call it a hobby. Yeah. It's more, in, yeah, okay, it's a hobby, I think, yes. Yeah. Sneakers and uh, fashion and, yeah, streetwear brands in Germany growing very huge in the last years. And also sneaker stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically all our life. It's not like really a hobby because like you follow it by the day, so it's like you could say it's, it's a, a lifestyle. Hobby. Not yeah, a hobby. it's part of the life. Basically. Okay, Moritz, please tell me something that's not sound uh, that's not millennial thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, right now I'm uh, working pretty much uh, like 12 to 15 hours a day, and besides, a great hobby. <laughs> besides that, I mostly enjoy the time with my girlfriend and with my friends. And before the so. mosey. No life? <laughs> <laughs> I try to remember, but uh, um, 
Yeah, it was uh, also the basic stuff, meeting yeah. friends. Yes, basic okay. stuff. Drinking, Drinking alcohol. <laughs> yes, more, more alcohol than now. Okay, you're, thank you're you so very much. Very boring people, so <laughs> they're not <Yeah>. that <laughs> crazy hobbies. Bungee so. jumping. <laughs> In case you get bored, I have a little game for you, guys. <laughs> I will tell you two words or phrases from the hookah world and you will decide which one suits you the best. Shall we begin? Yes. Of course. Smoking at home or smoke at shisha bar? In Germany at home. It depends on the country. Yes. For real. It's about you. In Your <laughs> opinion. It depends on the country, if it's like Czech Republic or Russia or parts of Spain, I would say I um, prefer smoking in a lounge. And if it's in Germany, um, yeah, I'm basically uh, yeah, preferring smoking at home. Shisha spot Hanau. Yes, Shisha spot Hanau. Yeah, in a studio at home, that's my way of smoking in Germany. There are some lounges in Germany like Wolke 7, Wolke 7 or Cloud 7 in English and uh, Yumera near my hometown. Um, but there are not, of, not a lot of good lounges in Germany, so smoking at home in Germany. Okay, Yannick Moritz, at home or at Shisha Bar? At, at home. home. <laughs> <laughs> Easy decision. I thought that it was longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's difficult to say because in Russia, I really prefer smoking lounges because the lounges are like top-notch level. Because you don't have a home there. And also yeah, that's right. that point, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Five heads. <head>. Not yet. <laughs> Five heads. <laughs> okay, quiet or noisy hookah? Noisy. Noisy. Of course, noisy. Easy thing. The hardest thing here, Adidas or Nike? Nike. <laughs> Adidas, okay. Nike. <laughs> Nike. Nike all the way. Nike. I think. Adidas with Yeezy, combined with Yeezy, to be honest. I have a lot more Yeezy shoes than Nike shoes, Nike shoes at home. Okay, I said it was a tough one. Okay, classic ball or funnel? Funnel, funnel. Funnel. Okay, Doha or Frigate? I didn't really try uh, Doha that much. I just tried it once. So I think yours is Frigate. Frigate. Yeah. Fr Do you say Frigate or Frigate? Frigate, Frigate. Okay. Frigate. <laughs> Frigate. <laughs> Frigate, Frigate. Frigate, I have every flavor. So we tried it on YouTube video and stuff. And that's for me the question. So, Frigate. 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 Okay. Shisha Messe or Hookah Club Show? Shisha oh. Messe. In Russia, it's Hookah Club Show. In Germany. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> Shisha Messe because Based we have a Based on your there. experience. I have to say, I've never been to a club show. I was at the John Cayano it's Festival true. and I've never been to the club show. So I skipped this one, you. so for me it's Shisha Messe. I've met Moritz in St. Petersburg with Alyosha in the yes. Hookah Box and he wasn't there, so yeah, it makes sense. Yes. But you didn't answer. Oh, for me it's a tough one. For um, me it's Shisha Messe, okay, Shisha Shisha Messe, Messe. of course, because we have a booth there and uh, in Russia we don't have it. So. Of course, of course. I think I have to say Shisha Messe because of the people we are meeting every year there. Speaking yeah. your language. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, yeah. <laughs> That's nah, one part yeah. of the story, but not the whole part. It's like you can meet up with our community and that's the main part for me um, on a German Shisha Messe. So I think I would take the German Shisha Messe. Okay, Yannick will surprise or Confirms. <laughs> I confirm. Okay, so it's Shisha Messe then. One or two hour hookah session? One and a half. One and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's really like one and a half. <laughs> 45 <laughs> minutes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, just for the real or? <laughs> nah. No, he's really smoking like yeah. random flavor. I'm enjoying my session. Like an like... Arabic guy. <laughs> yeah, kind <Okay>. of. <laughs> so, Matt Beer or Dusha? Matt Pier. I like the Matt Pier models more. I have never owned a Matt Pier. The design is like really classic, but I love the freaky designs of Dusha. So it's really hard to say. I've never owned a Matt Pier yet. I know lots so of people. So then? Yeah, I would say. Okay. In terms of the brand identity, I would take Dusha. In terms of, uh, yeah, the. Um, 
the hookah itself and smoking the hookah and the characteristics of the hookah, I would take Metper, I think. Okay. Instagram or YouTube for the content these days? For the long content, YouTube. <laughs> and for pictures and reels, of course, Instagram. For the pictures right now? Yeah, it's, it's it a mix, sucks. I would say. Personally, um, Instagram, because I'm the phototype person. I really like to enjoy good photo uh, photography stuff. And uh, that's difficult. I think Instagram because of the business behind it and our stuff. So your, uh, your channel is uh, non-profitable? Nine. <laughs> no, no, I, won't, I, won't, I, I don't want to say that it's non-profitable or not cool. It's just a gimmick. Yeah, I know, I know. But I think Instagram is my, my uh, platform. Yeah. Moritz? Uh, from my brand perspective, I would say Instagram is more important for us right now because we just started YouTube like four weeks ago. You are Instagram. here in the first video? Uh, no, uh, we made, uh, like, I think, two or three videos on uh, YouTube right now. Mm -hmm. First okay. one was with? The uh, was one, right? about Caesar Crystal here in Prague. Ah, oh, yeah, your trip. Okay. I think that this one is easy for you, HMD or foil? HMD. HMD. Maybe HMD. some surprises? <laughs> uh, HMD, <laughs> for sure. Okay. Tangiers Noir or Barley? Noir. Noir. Noir or Burkok? Burkok? Burkok. 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 Okay. The whole black leaf bowl or mixed with blonde leaf? For shootings. <laughs> yeah, for shootings. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Uh, for shootings, it's a mixed bowl with Virginia leaf and uh, dark leaf. And uh, for for my midnight bowl or the bowl after work, dark leaf bowl. Yeah, it's the same for me, I would say. Uh, I will stop here. Why do different content uh, and behave uh, some other way after the shooting? Why uh, you can't show German crowd that you smoke the whole black leaf it's in case that you have so much sponsors of, bl of blonde leaf tobacco or why is that so if you're shooting stuff for example reels or pictures you take like lots of hits and deep hits because you want to show the smoke you do rings you do blowholes and stuff i once did a shooting with tangiers and some <laughs> mix with must have and it was in the in the summer, it was really warm. It's too it was kind of shaky it's, video. It's exhausting. really exhausting. It's really also shaky. Yeah, no, I know. So that. if you like do photos and stuff, it's like better to have a relaxed bowl with some dark leaf. So if you will put out a shaked photo or reel, we know that you smoke ten years. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would say yeah, it's like for this. you? Words? Uh, most of the time whole a bowl with Dark leaf tobacco. My man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee. Cappuccino. <laughs> it's still coffee. When I have to choose one of both, I will say tea because I don't drink. Yeah. Uh, I don't drink coffee and I drink Me tea like uh, two times a year. <laughs> I see. It's yeah, also I tea, see. right? <laughs> What's your yeah, Lipton. A What's great your favorite tea? food. <laughs> it's a margarita. Stop here okay, because sorry. my next quest <laughs> question is kebab or pretzel. Okay, sorry. Uh, kebab for me. Kebab. Pretzel. Okay. It's, uh, uh, it's Dude, getting it's interesting. Kebab? Okay. No? You said pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Packing with fingers or poker? Poker and fork. Same for me. Same. Okay, Accessory, accessories, guys. And then, Czech or German hookah bars? I think that one is easy. Yeah, that's easy, Czech. Czech, for sure. I'm not quite sure about the lounges. Um, they're not in Prague. I'm not quite sure if there are lounges they are also good, like in Prague, but in Prague, it's easy decision with Czech Republic. Do you know that uh, after we publish this, you uh, won't have open doors in every German hookah bar, right? <laughs> It's no problem. For, for we most just of need the two open doors no or three open doors. That's <laughs> the others are already closed fast, so it's <laughs> fast. <laughs> okay, so right now we move on to the pictures, smokes, and reach. 
because uh, this part of interview is focused on you guys. It's not that Moritz won't have something to tell about it, but it's uh, based on your work. Okay. So guys, my first question is, what was the idea behind your channels and the names? We previously heard something about Just What Castle, but nothing about Who Case. Um, so yeah. what was the idea behind the names and your channels? It's an uh, easy one for me. Um, on Instagram it's Who Case, and uh, one part of the name is like hookah, a part of hookah, of the, of the word hookah. And uh, the last three words are like my surname, Surname is uh, two, two, three, A's, A Z E. I, so it's uh, Ayosha no for H. the A. Uh -huh. Yes, Ayosha for the A. Z for uh, or Z E for my surname. Surname is right one. Yeah. Smart. It's it's last name. Hmm? Last, last name. name. Sorry. Yeah, last last name. name. So Ayosha Zimelka. So it's who case with Ayosha and Zimelka combined. Huka Ayosha Zimelka. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It. That's the name. And why did you start? It's basically, yeah, you can... Continue. Why did I start? No, no, no. Uh, yes, we have the name, who case? Uh, Yannick said something about his past, but uh, you did not. Why would you start to uh, publish hookah photos? It was a similar story, to be honest. It was like, um, hookah is for me an aesthetic branch or aesthetic uh, topic to, to take shots or photography of it. And um, yeah, then I started, or I talked to some of my friends and they told me, hey, your, your photography style is great. Why didn't you start a hookah blog? And uh, that's, that was the beginning of my hookah blog. Did you ever consider it, not hookahs, but for example, fashion? Back in the days, no. To be honest, um, I think in the last two or three years we had several talks about um, combining the lifestyle of fashion stuff with uh, hookah, and I think and that's case, kind of, but also for our content on our blogs. Um, back in the days, we really thought seriously about uh, to start like lifestyle content uh, separated to the hookah content. And uh, I think then we started to do it like combined. So on our pictures, you can see some f uh, lifestyle and fashion and sneaker stuff and also the hookah. And that, that was our way to start with lifestyle combined to sneaker stuff. Okay, who or what inspired you, you two? Because we, we, looked, uh, we look up to somebody, to something, and uh, we have to inspire in making our content. And it's not like just we have the one really original idea and nobody has it. So who inspired you? For hookah content, especially For pictures? For what you are doing. Uh, it um, doesn't have to be just the pure content, but the way of making the content or the aesthetics or something like that. <laughs> I think there's no real inspiration for me. Uh -huh. for pictures. I think we just established it back then to make pictures also with us on the picture because back then yes. the pictures were just the hookahs just from this ankle. And, and then we YouTube said... Videos. Yes. That was the other, par other part. Just hookah or YouTube videos. And then uh, we started to do what you yeah. already said. And then we took pictures with us on it. And yeah. since then we're just doing like I would say a mix of both, but most of the times you see me on the picture. On the reels, it's not possible because I film in the reels, of course, but uh, yeah. I think there's no real inspiration. It was the whole kind of Instagram thing, I would say, back in the days. There were a lot of photography blogs or like um, product, product photography things, like in the tech bubble. There were a lot of uh, people in Germany who shoot uh, like iPhones and technical stuff. And that was maybe a kind of inspiration for me to start like, yeah, shooting some, some kind of content with uh, any product. Okay. And then combined with my hobby hooker, it was like shooting hooker stuff. I consider you as a visual storyteller. But have you ever imagined to make blog site or shoot podcasts and different stuff? Yes, we started YouTube back then. There was also like a thing new to start. Then we started live streams. Mm -hmm. Podcast is also a topic we discussed about many times, but the time is like... You not... don't have time for it. Yeah. It's too much at this, uh, these days to combine. Yeah, with Case, there was also a project we are starting. 
and the case takes also lots of time. So everything together is like really packed in terms of content and doing stuff. So I also want to have a few hours, <laughs> just free time. But uh, yeah. I can imagine. Okay, this one is kind of tough. In which way is your content different in comparison to the rest of the German scene? I Why are you one of the biggest ones? The consistency, like posting every day for six years, seven years. Very good point. Yeah, also posting stories every day. If you're on vacation, if you're like in Prague, it doesn't matter, you have to post something. It's not, not like you're forced to, but I love to show the community also some stuff on vacation. It became a habit for you. Yes. Also, the community is very great because when you're in Prague for the first time, for me, I was asking, do you have good hookah lounges? And like 10 lounges popped up. So it's like, like that. Um, maybe another point is like the authenticity. Authenticity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> authentic. Yeah, you are authentic. Yes. I think this is one part of the, of the whole thing. Yeah. What's different cells? What differences are there? Okay, that's it. That's enough to say. <laughs> uh, eye for the picture, for the yeah. look. Maybe the aesthetic. Eye for the picture, as you said. Mm -hmm. Eye yes. for the picture. That's a great yeah. catch. Okay. What creators from abroad are you following and who among your colleagues in Germany is also making good stuff? Maybe starting with Germany. The biggest one, Marvin. Marvin? SVG, Huka, SVG Shisha, Shisha VG. Marvin Dutino. Yes, um, there, are, there are many good content creators in Germany, I have to say. So try to name five. Let's name five. Marvin. Marvin. Uh, Dölit. Shisha yes, Shisha WG, Marvin, uh, Dölit on YouTube, um, Shisha Deutschland, Shisha yes. Germany, Genghis on Instagram, yeah. Maxi, Algo Shisha. Directly, Carl Direct. Smoke as well. Yes. yes. Them, I would say there are more than five that like yeah. we're doing good ground that as well. That's great. And from abroad? Um, Sakamoto, Gabriel Sakamoto ah. from uh, Brazil. Um, from Spain. Yeah, and we've met uh, with some shots of vodka in Russia. Yeah. In a, of course we did. <laughs> Our dinner. <laughs> we've had a good time yes. there. Sakamoto <laughs> is a great guy. Um, from Spain, Andalus Shisha. Um, and also Don Ruben Blanco. Yeah, very nice guys. From uh, France. Difficult in France. There's Shisha Block, but he was stopping. Kind of inactive starting. nowadays. Uh, what um, was his name? Nargitest. Ah, okay, uh, but, but he that stopped was too. like yeah, 2017, stopped. 2018, yes. he stopped. Um, uh, a Russian one. Uh, um, Vital Chumakov. Vitaly Chumakov. Yeah. Vitaly Chumakov. I'm not quite sure if, you, if you've heard about him. I, I just heard about him. Apin Photo. Apin Photo, do you know him? Nah. He's the guy who's doing the videography stuff for many of Russian brands. Mm. Really good stuff. I think this is the best one yes. overall. The best picture the content world. you can see for What Rukos. was his name again? Apin. It's A P I N photo. Ah, okay. It's a really crazy guy with good content. Um, yeah, he's doing great stuff. You've already mentioned that, but how difficult is to share your content on daily basis during the years? It's like part of our lives, I would say. Yes. So nowadays it's not that kind of difficult anymore. Back in the days, at the beginning, I think it was just the constancy, constancy, Con consistency, consistency. Um, and nowadays it's part of our lives. So I think it's kind of easy. Um, some in some parts of our lives, it's also very stressful. But we really appreciate um, calling our hobby our job yeah. in the same way. Nowadays we just nearly post everything, also lifestyle stuff, if we pick up some new sneakers or if we go to the city or on vacation. So it's not just hookah-based content? No. Back in the day we were really, really thinking like about can we post other stuff? Do people enjoy looking at other stuff like some sneakers or something? But uh, the community really appreciated other content, so we just started uh, with posting everything we do. And I think it's basically working, so it's really fun doing it. Great. Now we continue. What tips and advice would you 
give your hookah, uh, would you give to content hookah creators? I think it's a lot more difficult than back in the days to start a blog, to uh, establish a blog um, like we do. But uh, the main thing is you have, uh, yeah, you need to have a basis of quality level for photography, also for um, the selection of hookers at home, I would say, and uh, also the consistency is the main part of uh, being a content creator, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah, the more you post, the more the algorithm likes you. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I have two more important things. If you take a picture, please take a picture of the whole hookah. <laughs> it's because some pictures are like bowl cut off, just doesn't look that good. And the second tip is like, if you want to start, don't ask 10 brands for everything, for anything, if you have just 10 followers, because that's the honest question for Moritz. Some uh, people, how many uh, creators ask you for a free product per month? Uh, it's easier to say per day, it's like 10 to 20 per day. And people most, start off most of the time, they have like 10 followers and uh, telling us that they want to start. And uh, yeah, of you course, we don't send them anything. For the people, you have to start out of passion, not for just looking for products. Yes. It's like That's we did point. it for passion. We just posted stuff because we liked it. You we have to buy hookah. some hookahs and stuff before you yeah, get something for free. My whole it was all our background to get free stuff. Yes. It was our background to create good content, high quality content. With the batch as you have already. Yeah, yes. back in the days, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how exactly does the German uh, legislation affect you in terms of uh, posting? Because we can see uh, in every post you will uh, put there Anzige, Anzige or something like that. Yes. Uh, it's something like promotion. So just tell me, uh, do you have uh, blinded hands and eyes and do you just have to follow uh, simple rules or it's more difficult? It's more difficult. In Germany it's like that. If you take a brand and for us we it's, it's our work and if you take a brand even if they don't pay you something you have to show the people or you have to write Anzeige because or it's like advertisement. Yeah, it's like difficult because some people get like lawsuits because they take somebody even if they bought it by themselves. They so may, sometimes you see like uh, advertisements, but paid by myself or something. Some but you put it only to your posts, not your stories, right? Also on also, the stories. Also, also, you have to. That's the first step of regulation and law stuff you have to do when you do it on a, on a basis like it's our job. Yeah. And um, another part of the story is uh, it's not allowed to do uh, tobacco advertising in that way. Same here. Yeah. That's a big part of uh, the one. Um, yeah. And what else? The 20, 25 grams. It's it's uh, for us personally as a hookah enthusiast. It's shit. It's bullshit for the environment. It's bullshit for us to stock it at home yeah. or to yeah to stock it. And for everybody else, the the imagine price the half of our community is pissed because they constantly go to Elvano or other uh, uh, other shops well. in Germany bringing yeah. stuff. So yeah, it's the same. Okay, did you ever have problems in uh, this uh, particular matter? Like somebody sued you or did you uh, some kind of no. bad time? Or? No. I'm happy that it wasn't that way. Crystal clear? Yes. No. Nice. Luckily. <laughs> okay, uh, since when did the hobby become a profession for you? Real profession in terms of like we're living off of that. Not or living, but content. earning content money was. and f uh, barter stuff. 2019. Yes. 2019. Late 2019, I would say. That was the first step um, of uh, create, cre no, establish our own business in that way. And um, our main job since 2021. Yes. And what uh, was your profession before you start uh, this kind of profession? I did an apprenticeship, so in Germany it's called Ausbildung, <laughs> at uh, Volkswagen in logistics. And when I finished that, I just uh, yeah, 
Went off Volkswagen and started with Hooker. Grab one of their cars and... <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, worked at a bank, a regular bank in Germany. And Do you want a mortgage? <laughs> <laughs> and I've worked there for like uh, four years. And um, in the last year of my uh, work there, I was like, I need to change something in my life. And uh, the hobby part of hookah and the business part of hookah um, was growing these days. And then I started working at Zomo in Germany. So the hookah sa saved you from the corporate? Uh, yeah, a bit. But uh, also Zomo was there to, to um, yeah, uh, to... to uh, offer you the opportunity. Yes, yes, to offer me the opportunity to work in that kind of branch. Yes. And that was the, the first step in the hookah branch, branch to, uh, yeah, to do it as a, or to work in, in the main job there. It was also a problem if you have a main job and there's like shisha messe, intertabak, events. Yeah. I, I need take, a free day. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. It doesn't work like that. And uh, yeah, you have to make a change. And someday also, you have to decide for yourself also on, this path or this. Also in terms of invitations, like traveling for uh, brands in the hookah branch. There were like some uh, vacation stuff or it was like the first one was the invitation from Adalia in, the Tur in Turkey. Yes. And that was the first time we've uh, talked about I need a vacation at my main job and we need to travel to Turkey for the side job back in the days. Yes. It's the first struggle with the main job back in the days. Okay, uh, you launched it, so I will continue. Uh, about co collaborations, do you negotiate the collaborations by yourselves, or are you represented by an agency of some sort? Back in this day, uh, back in the day, we started by ourselves. Um, but I think last year, on the no, last yes. year, uh, oh, a good friend of mine, 2019, I think, left. Fredo. Yeah, le late 19, I started with Fredo. It's People Square. Yeah, but it was just like the uh, imprint for oh, our yeah, page. You're right. And last year, there were like so many requests, I couldn't answer them all. So I talked to Fredo, he is my agent right now, or our agent, and he's just managing the stuff with the brands. And it's really like easy for us to say, we're gonna do that, or no, that's not uh, that nice. And Fredo is also very, I know, since the fifth grade. So was basically- Was a friend of him back in the yeah. days, and then he started a bit kind of business with us like an agent. Yeah. It sounds more professional than it is, but he's just our guy to talk to brands. In your level, I can imagine up. the tens uh, and hundreds messages you can get about collaborations and stuff. And yeah, it's good. Okay, guys. So, huh. how expensive is it approximately to get a post, real or a long-term collaboration with you? I would say one number. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I can't say numbers for that. It depends on the yeah, collaboration. Yeah, that's why approximately. <laughs> <laughs> it depends really... on the kind of collaboration. It depends on number of posts. It depends on everything, I would say. You have to ask our agent for that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it simple. One picture to your Instagram feed. Ask Fredo. <laughs> I can't really tell you the numbers. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. not possible. So it's, I would say, hundreds of euros, maybe. I'm close. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> that's where, is the, where is the agent? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was your most delightful and the worst collaboration so far? I think the most delightful ones were the, the partners uh, who supported, supported us since, uh, since day one. Um, for example, it's Mose, for example, it's Ian, Viro, Ocean, Ocean. Uh, Aladdin yes. was uh, also one of the first ones who supported us. I think these are the most delightful ones. And uh, what was the question? The, mo the, the bad worst, yes. the worst. Yeah, also the bad ones. <sighs> Can't tell any names, but there were some who were very difficult to communicate with, I would say. Very um, uh, impulsive. <laughs> impulsive. 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 Yes. Impulsive people, but we can't tell any names at this point. 
yeah, people who are really pushing for content and they are like... Pushing like, you have to do this and this. And if you write something like, you have to... It's difficult to say. Some people just have a bad wording, I would say, if they ask for something. So just, they're not kind, they're just uh, pushing for stuff and... Yeah. That's, that's not what everybody like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what places have you visited thanks to your collaborations? Okay, Turkey. We started with Turkey. Um, Paraguay. Spain. Yeah. Paraguay. Paraguay, Brazil. South America, Brazil, Paraguay with Zomo back in the day. Yeah, I was envy about your trip back then. <laughs> I'm sorry for he that. He did man. two trips, by the way. <laughs> two, yeah, two, yeah. Or three. Uh, I remember, three? please, please, Alyosha, tell Zomo that I want to go. <laughs> Yeah, also. Uh, <laughs> Alyosha, uh, Hookah Expo, Las Vegas? Miami. Miami. It was Miami. I was at the Hookah Expo in Miami in 2019. Um, I've combined it with uh, vacation and also then uh, the Miami fire. Dolphins. Yes. <laughs> no, unfortunately not the Miami Dolphins, but I was at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, Stadium and uh, I was at the Hookah Expo in 2019. Um, also in Spain, I was there three times at the Shisha Messe in Sevilla. Dubai? No. Nobody? No, I wasn't there in Dubai. Not invited. We Me were, neither. Weren't invited there. Um, <laughs> where else? Prague. Czech. Russia. No. <laughs> Czech Republic, uh, Russia, in Moscow, and also in St. Petersburg. And have you ever been to Ukraine, thanks to Ukraine? No. That's why. That's why. This one, Stockholm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, was, the most expensive tobacco ever made. I was uh, in Stockholm in Sweden with Deswal. That was the release party of their most expensive hookah and also their tobacco, tobacco with lounge. gold flakes. Golden flakes. I still yes. have it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think this is basically every country in terms of hookah. I would say. No. Yes. Yeah. Understand anything? It's not. What annoys you about your profession? What annoys me about my profession? To be honest, there are some days... Smoking every day, it's shit. It's part of my, my version. Um, there are some days I don't want to smoke hookah that early in the day, but I have to shoot. So I have to smoke hookah very early in the day to shoot. And I think that's one of the most annoying things but it's not that annoying, I would say. It's just like sometimes annoying. There's lots of paper stuff behind the scenes. Also this. That's also very annoying, but it's like, if you're doing business by yourself, you have to do it. There's no way around it. So that's also annoying. I would say if you want to go to a vacation, you have to shoot stuff before it. If you want to go on a two weeks trip, the and you don't bring a hookah content. with you, you have to prepare everything. Um, but I, I think that's just a structure you have to give your day. And yeah, I would say the paper stuff is for me the most annoying. Moritz, what annoys, what annoys you in your profession? Also so, paperwork? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> in German you have to say paperwork. Yeah, paperwork of course. and. Uh, also, we have some difficult clients who, um, uh, yeah, maybe for the for the wholesale clients, paying late, and you have to run after them all the time, and yeah, things like that. I think it's the usual uh, problems you have when you have your own business, and like in up every other industry. Mm -hmm. I have a common question for all of you three. My friends, do you feel the support of your family and girlfriends in what you do? Um, my parents back in the days were a little bit of... Uh, skeptic? Skeptic? Skeptic. Skeptic. Yeah. skeptic is a nice word. Skeptic in, <laughs> in that way, but uh, nowadays they're supporting uh, everything, uh, every part of my main job and uh, of my hobby, of course. And also my girlfriend does. So um, I really appreciate the support of my family and my girlfriend. And they're very cool with the, with the main parts of my job. And they're, they're always supporting myself to do my stuff, to, to live the life of uh, calling my hobby as a job or my job as a hobby. Yeah. For me, it's the same. 
or not the same. For me, it's uh, I really um, enjoyed the support since day one. I never had problems uh, with my parents smoking at home and stuff. Uh, with my girlfriend, it's the same. She doesn't like hookah that much, but uh, she supports me in all the ways she can. So that's the best oh, thing. Okay, that's good. That's yes, good. I can't smoke hookah when we're chilling and uh, watching something. So <laughs> that's Tough one. Uh, really okay. good. At the beginning, it was kind of dif difficult, right? Not difficult, but I was just... Challenging. Uh, <laughs> Challenging, yeah, that's, that's the correct word. Yeah, if people don't really enjoy hookah and you like smoke dark blend all the time in the evening and it's hard to breathe in the winter because you can't open the windows. Uh, so you like, did uh, a great job managing it. Yes. <laughs> Moritz? Uh, well, when I started... Uh, with my first production, it was like 17,000 euros or something, which was everything I had. And I told it to my father and he was uh, very skeptical and tried to stop me, but... Uh, <laughs> nowadays? <laughs> you yeah, you but okay. nowadays um, my father... He developed a new model. No, not that, but... <laughs> kind of. For real? Yeah, not, not he's, developing, he's, but he's uh, working also in the company and supports me very much and I'm That's very cool thankful thing. for it. Very cool And thing. also for my girlfriend, um, she never had a problem with it, uh, but now Only also... Only problems with you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe sometimes, but um, now besides her side job, uh, uh, be besides her main job, she also do some accounting stuff and I'm also very thankful for that. That's great. And at last, let's talk about case. Let's do it. Please describe to me your products, your philosophy behind them and who is your target customer? Our products, we have launched case back in 2021. 30th of April was the first release. We started with Hookah, the Multi-Tool, Halo. Grid tip. Grid tips. Basically some stuff you can't really buy in Germany. Back just, in the days? Yeah. It's just you see the normal stuff. And I would say K-stuff is more niche for customers that see, for, for example, the grid tip for the first time, it's 32.90, so it's not that cheap. It's an expensive item, but it's heavy. And the mouthpiece as well, the, uh, the rough mouthpiece, it's like very heavy. It's very similar to this mouthpiece. Yeah, that's the, really, that's the one thing I don't like about case. I hate that really heavy mouthpiece. We really love it. Yeah, I we never really used another one yeah. since the first Same sample. Here. Same here. Always so, using this one. Yeah, we, we um, connecting with our community. We see what the people like, what the people want. And we also think about things we want to have as products of our own. So we created, for example, a stainless steel fork. We just launched it like one uh, week ago. And stainless so steel poker. poker. Yes. yes. These are some, some things uh, that are not on the German market that come. But I haven't seen any more your uh, uh, packages for tobacco, the glass ones. Ah, yes, the glass jars. Yeah, case yeah. jar. Case jar. They are not on the website anymore. They are. I think they, sure. are. I they are. I checked last week. Maybe they are sold out now. <laughs> no, really. What would be good? <laughs> there was also an item like there are not that everybody asks uh, us where do we get packages for like for example dark sites, and for me I go to T Dogs or stuff. I get one euro boxes. And uh, especially for the new situation with the 25, yeah, 25 grams, grams yeah. it will be that worth was it. our intention to produce a case jar. Yes. For real. He had some more expensive boxes from IKEA, yes. I guess. The glass ones with the wooden, uh, the wooden one. Yes. Glass and combined mm -hmm. with wood. I use them. Yeah. They're good, but they're pretty expensive compared to the case jars. <laughs> for real. <laughs> and. Uh, for me personally, or I think I speak uh, for both of us, we love to have stuff with our own brand on it. And so just we can use it on a daily basis and we really like it. So the glass jars or the case jars are perfect for it. And who is your target customer? Target customer? Everybody who follows us yes. in, the main, in the first step. And also um, the German community who wants to 
have uh, really exclusive stuff, exclusive hookers, um, more modern hookers, I would say, um, kind of Russian way hookers, I would call it. People who want good hookers are our, our customers. Like enthusiasts. <laughs> enthusiasts, yeah. yes, that's the, that's the best word for it. And uh, our main focus was to produce a hookah. It's a lounge product, would you say? Yeah, because of the one horse, hose part, it's also a lounge product, I would say. Yeah, you can upgrade it with a stainless steel kit, with the blow-offs, with the sleeves. For the people at home, they can change up the colors and stuff, but for the... So high level of customization. Yes. High quality stuff. You can also invest into the Caesar glasses we got uh, with Case. So you can start with 189 or you can just take Caesar balls, stainless steel kits and everything and go up to 400. You can buy what you want. You can very, f you have a wide or a huge var variety of hookers and customization. So, mm -hmm. and what focus. could we expect in the future from you? There is something coming soon yes. next month, but we can't tell you anything else about it. But there's a new model. It has coming two next ports or one port. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> so it's hookah. Oops. Okay, we will see. It's a new hookah. It's a new model. It's okay, uh, new launching next next month. Yes, probably new next case month. Incoming. Yes, it's first news right here. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear. Okay, thank you guys so much. And now it's more. It's time. Oh, okay. Yeah, it goes. And I called this part from zero to hookah manufacturer hero. <laughs> the best claim. <laughs> <laughs> Moritz, please, uh, what is the story behind Moe's? You, uh, you said something about your father, about uh, the amount uh, of money you had, but not about the origin idea. Yes, okay, so as I said, we started 2019, but before I designed hookahs uh, for another brand, um, and we had a deal like for every hooker they produce, I get a certain amount of money. Um, but I got the money for the first production, but like after one year, I noticed that they produced more and did not notify me about new productions or anything. And after that, I decided to start my own brand, um, which was Mother Den. And uh, it was the first name, the first idea. Uh, yes. And then we. I started with all my money because uh, uh, I was it's in my expensive to make I was it. in my bachelor studies. I made it dual studies. It's like three months of work, three months yeah, yeah, yeah. of, mm -hmm. uh, of university. Combined. Yes, and um, it was in an oil and gas company and I earned about 1,200 euros a month. I saved that money and after one year I had enough money to start uh, my first production and then everything has gone this way to now. Um, like uh, we started with the model I talked about before with the co-branding of Hookays. Was it successful? Uh, or it was all it, just a niche product for his followers? It was okay, it was, but it did not have a much differentiation to the usual German hookers because it was a normal stainless steel model. Uh, the they were same. speaking about your, uh, your co-branded hookah, that it's average and... Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it, was, it was a basic model uh, no, I think compared to... Which one? I mean, be, the first in one. terms the of one? the material and everything. Uh, it was yeah. not that very common with three hoses. So okay, yeah. yeah. Everybody did in four. Terms of he three had three. Hoses, yes, the design but was the material. Not very... Material. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, material because was... everybody in Germany wanted stainless <laughs> <Ouch>. steel. <laughs> uh, stainless steel hookers, and uh, then we sold that one in about three months, four months. Then it was sold out and. Starting from there, I changed the direction of the design to more Russian style inspired products like with POM bases and one host port. And then it really started to get track. And the first model we released uh, in this style was the. Air? Uh, no, Breeze was like one or two weeks before air. And the Breeze model 
was sold out in two days, I think, the first production. And then two weeks later, we uh, made the Air model, which is uh, was, was also bigger. very similar. Yeah, but uh, bigger. And then we ordered more of Breeze model. Then the dash. sphere. Oh. Dash. I think the dash was before the sphere. Sphere, all right. Yes. Yeah. Dash, uh, dash model, uh, which we smoked yesterday in another lounge, uh, yeah. randomly. And <laughs> then there was the next model, which was the sphere. And now I'm smoking sphere two, which is pretty new. And I saw it on their channels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was the way. Also, a lot of accessories uh, released during this journey. Okay, first mouthpiece. Did you tell him about the first mouthpiece with the epoxy part? You knew that one? We uh, had uh, these uh, via Shanti in Czech Republic. Yes, the Elements mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. Yes. Was this was the, the very one. first product. It was the OG it was, product of Mose. Ooh. It was even before the Mose one. The first resin was film. Yeah. Yes, it, it was, was the, like the first, the first uh, product. product. Then the one hooker and then our mouth tips. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, what challenges have you had to face when building Mose? For example, you know, obstacles, bizarre fuck ups. Yes. And stuff. Especially in the last two years, uh, our products got copied very often. And it's very annoying to uh, protect the intellectual property, and the designs, and uh, fight for it with lawyers. Um, and another thing, back in the days when we produced the Breeze 1 model, uh, we had, like, our sample had, it was a small hooker, so the down stem was, is pretty near to the bottom of the glass, mm -hmm. and we just got one glass before we ordered the production, so we designed everything according to this one. And then we received the production, and, and all, all, the, no, all the glasses, uh, they all go like this in the bottom, uh, but some are even higher. And then we had problems with some down stems, uh -huh. which were too long. And we had to produce. Uh, you had to cut very, them. No, we had to produce new ones very fast. But the problem was that all hookers were sold out already, and we had to find. Yeah, yeah, fill it. Ooh, replace mine as well. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> like twenty percent of the first production had this problem. Yeah, it happens. But uh, you learn from it, and now when we get samples of glasses, we check it even more and leave some space. Great. Uh, what are the most and least successful products you have released? Uh, the most successful is very easy, I think. <laughs> it's the Breeze 2 model, which is sold in the mid-range of, uh, of five figures in quantities. And the least successful product was uh, the uh, oh. no case. Case is another <laughs> brand of them, but um, which is quite successful. But Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the least successful product was the Mose Air. I think mm -hmm. uh, it was only 300 pieces, and it took like half a year or maybe even longer to sell all of them. So. It takes too long. But yes. What kind of feedback have you received from the German hookah community since the release? Well, at the start, it was um, that only the really enthusiastic people was interested in our products because they knew all the Russian stuff and um, were interested in one host hookahs also uh, because then. Everybody wanted uh, four hose hookah in Germany, just stainless steel and just very basic stuff. It's French time. Yes. <laughs> it was. Uh, but I think uh, we teach the people very good that these models we have have very much advantage. Uh, and you are very. Um, it's very easy to customize the products. You can switch the glass bases, you can switch the colors of your sleeves. 
And why do you think uh, your smallest hookah has the most impact? Because we know uh, we consider tr- uh, small hookahs as travel hookahs, but you set the new standard that small hookah is a regular hookah in Germany, and yes. uh, that's that's great. But I don't know if we did we set this. Yeah, yes. I, I think the Breeze Two was the yeah, okay. start of the mm-hmm. establishing. Maybe I think maybe Breeze it's, One it's because after that uh, it was yeah, it was Breeze Ocean Cave small. Ah, it was the Breeze Two. Yeah, it was opinion. the Breeze Two with Breeze uh, One yeah, was not so that type of uh, hooker who established the way of the small hooker. Thank you. I have the first version. <laughs> <laughs> you can get the two. Um, oh, <laughs> but uh, yes. Uh, after that, many many brands made uh, small hookers. Uh, but I can't tell you the reason. Maybe it, the functions also were a reason of the Breeze 2. How about um, COVID? Times of COVID, smoking alone at home, not in a lounge. I think that was a factor. But, of but why? But why should you use the small hookah? I think the because the people could be scared of falling. I don't know. I think the Maybe. biggest impact was the blow off variation. Yes, I because think the, I variety, think it was yeah. mainly the functions. Yeah, the Instagram trend. Yeah, the, yeah, the plate blow off was like really a thing yeah. in Germany. You only had the hawk cooker was, which was like really expensive, hard to get. Not Now we have like good. stimulation with 31 or 32 variations. 100. 100. Yeah. Plus <laughs> 1000 <laughs> unlimited. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, the same question. Uh, as I put the guys, uh, who is your target customer? Because you're telling me you're constantly sold out. So sold out by whom? By the lounges, well, right, foreign right companies, distributors, or uh, everyday hookah smokers? Right now, uh, Breeze 2 is not sold out all the time. But um, in the beginning, it was like we received a new delivery from the production um, and we put it on the website and some minutes after it it was sold out um, also a lot of uh, wholesalers and shops asked for the products and we had waiting lists with more than 10000 hookers for shops and all the all the shops were like pissed off because they had waiting times of six months or something um, i think the german hookah community is learned about the about these products more and also the ones that were used to smoke these stainless steel versions a stainless steel four holes hookahs they became more interested in hookah, maybe also because of COVID, because they had more time for it and uh, they smoked more and maybe they was on Instagram yeah. checking them and saw the hookah and just were more interested. And I think the price of the hookah is a good entry because Russian products are Very, very expensive in Germany. Because of the distribution and stuff. Yes, Yes. and maybe it is a good entry point uh, for these people. And it was their first. I think that's also why Alersha said that during the COVID, yeah, it was a starter pack for them. Yes, of course. I have a funny story about COVID uh, times. Back then, you weren't allowed to go out after 22 o'clock. And we traveled back or we drove back to his home after we worked at the office and you had to had like these paper sheets to show the police if you were out and police stopped us and asked me for everything identity card yeah they stopped me and then i told them what i was working at like hookah stuff and they told me or the one policeman told me uh yes hookah um i'm trying to get the breeze too but it's sold out all the time <laughs> also, also we had a police officer yeah also we had a police officer yeah we also had a um Every time we export to uh, another country which is not in the European Union, uh, we have to f- fill an export document from if the value of the of the stuff is more than 1,000 euro, and it's sent to the customs. And then sometimes, like one of hundred times, there is uh, 
There is a visit of the customs, then they say, they send an email, they will come next day. And they also know the invoice then, and then the customs uh, agent came. And it was a young boy like my age. And he, he just told me, uh, I'm just here because uh, I saw it's a Breeze 2 and I'm trying to get one like three months now. And Give me that, one and you will have no problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, when he was um, leaving, he told me, uh, yeah, we will send the invoice for the visit. And it was like 150 euro just. Okay, so Breeze 2 is now the new currency in Germany. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can see. <laughs> okay. Maybe this one is a little difficult. What is your marketing strategy in a market with so many restrictions on tobacco and hookah advertising? <laughs> These two guys. <laughs> um, yeah. How do you promote your products? Mainly on Instagram, uh, also with Alyosha Yannick and also a lot of other bloggers. And I think the, may, uh, the best marketing for us is that the product has a good quality and... Speaks for itself. Is, yeah, so somebody sees the product at its friend's house and check the functions or the quality and uh, we hear this from a lot of people that a friend recommends the hookah and we only post on Instagram and let them do the work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just kidding. I think they also have a really nice community on their Instagram yeah, as well. Yes. Yeah. They we have up like uh, 81,000 followers on Instagram now. And yeah. That's I think like 10 times more than me, but uh, yeah. In a great community. <laughs> yeah, that's Germany. But it's nice to hear. And the final question in this part for all of you three. In your opinion, what are the most interesting and horrible hookah trends these days? Okay. Maybe the blow-off? So, yeah, yeah, we started this trend, but <laughs> it annoys me right now because uh, we started this, it with the Breeze 2 and I also think that this was the function what ev that everybody liked, uh, that you can change the blow-off blow mm -hmm. direction and but we had like, f uh, normally, originally, it was planned to have four, but the bloggers <laughs> find even we more. We invented so more. I think we had like eight or something then. <laughs> um, and okay, so the other brands saw, this is selling good. We need to make more than this. Uh -huh. And yeah, yeah. now and it's like, uh, Stimulation. With, without names, uh, <laughs> there are brands, uh, they post, oh, this hookah has like, 25 blowout options. And, and it's worth it. And nearly 24 out of these 25 looks the same. So yeah. I don't it think... It depends on the angle. I don't think know. there is there is any... Maybe it? Any, any more value in, mm -hmm. in more options. Now I think you better have one, one, one to five that look good than... Uh, like 25. Mm -hmm. And a good trend? Good trend. Um, HMD. Uh, it's not a trend yeah. anymore, guys. Yeah. 2012. Yeah. Uh, I think for, for me it's... Uh, I know it's uh, in Germany since 2020, but... <coughs> for, me, <coughs> for me it's uh, yeah a new brand we are carrying ex exclusively, um, which is Emotion. I think I showed you before. Uh, it, it has a modern product design with muted pastel colors on the hookahs and right now we, we released the first model with them, which is a travel hooker. And uh, I think these colors are very great and make it, are something new to yeah. the hookah scene. Yeah, great. Definitely. So from the influencer's point of view, the worst and the best hookah trends nowadays. I think the worst trend is the blow-off trend. I like to have like one blow-off, two blow-offs, maybe to switch it up, just like case for example. Um, I think not every hooker has to have like 10, 15, 20 blow-offs. But uh, if they want to promote it that way, then it's like that. But it's not necessary. 
And for a good trend, I really like uh, the way of uh, motion, like the soft touch material. It's really like something new. You've promoted recently a lot. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah mm, the nice green color as uh, you have on your boxes. Mm, yeah, it look it looks great and kind of different. Yes. Yeah, also the product design is very like uh, not that just put on the table and you can smoke it. You really see if you look at it, it had uh, it has magnets and stuff, so it's really nice to smoke the first model. I'm looking forward to new models. And in terms of other trends... Alyosha, think... don't mention the blow-off and don't mention the travel hooker. <laughs> I want to. Um, the, the, ba the bad part for me, it's, uh, it's combined with the blow-off stuff, but, <laughs> but <laughs> to be more precisely, I would say that uh, I don't like hookers with too many um, parts. Do you, do you, ah, so, yeah. so many uh, different and mini parts, you have to uh, build up the hookah first. That's the bad part, in my opinion. So yeah. it's combined with yeah. the blow-off part. Because yeah, you have I, ha to I have a story about it. Uh, I received my first uh, Mose Breeze model mm -hmm. um, by... Uh, Shots for you? <laughs> Mo it's, four, it's four already, Mo by the way. Four, four already, Mo okay. We had, an we had an agreement that uh, if I uh, fucked up the name of Mose uh, and say that thing, uh, I will acquire two shots. But after the show, because I'm really like, <coughs> yes, you know, you know. It's easy fast. Yeah, yeah. And um, well, once I received the Breeze One model, I was about to clean it. I uh, grabbed the exactly. top part off, and all of my six or eight bowls were on the ground and oh fuck i lost one or two so yeah yeah that's that's uh, what i meant exactly uh, i hope that's better right now it's better on the breeze too because uh it's screwed and the top that you yeah uh, as well as case right oh so, or similar way yes it's like all yes, cases so. o-ring and screwed so both um best part for me is the um russian hookah brands or the Russian hookah, not hookah, tobacco brands who um, are establishing their brands in Germany. I think this is the best part for me, for the um, culture in Germany to improve in that way. I think, that's I think the best part is like the, the hookahs were there for like two years already, but the tobacco coming to Germany, like Theo, for example, Blackburn, yeah. must have, was like back in the day, very nice to have, dark side. For us, the dark leaf tobacco coming to Germany was a pleasure and it's still a pleasure if a new brand wants to join Germany as well. But you know, it's like maybe the matter of 10% of the community. Yes. Just all personal opinion in that way. Yeah, yeah, I like, totally agree with that. Yeah. But because you're totally uh, right with we often buy dark leaf tobacco from Germany, <laughs> <laughs> but it will and may change because of the 25 gram and Unfortunately. we also want to support our legal distribution. So, uh, right now, we are coming to the final part of our interview and we spoke about that several times. This is all about German hookah scene and market and it's for all free of you. So my first question is, what is the environment of the hookah companies in the German market like? You know, competitive, friendly, collaborative, dramatic or even toxic? I think nowadays it's mostly friendly. Back in the days, I think there were some some brands who were toxic, kind of toxic. I think it uh, they were some kind of a fight in a shisha messe with yes. two uh, yeah. two yeah. shops. Yeah, Inter Tabak, right? Yeah, yeah. Inter Tabak, oh, Inter Tabak, or 18. I'm not yeah. quite sure, but nowadays it's kind of friendly. I would say mostly in front of the scenes it's friendly, but behind the scenes it's still like competitive, competitive, yes, and course. with lawyers and stuff. So lots of stuff happening behind the scenes. I can mean, I can imagine all German hookah brands are really fond of you, of your success. I don't know, but <laughs> maybe yes. Yeah, so mostly friendly, but behind the scenes it's competitive yes, as well course. as yes. Yes. other. Okay, name your favorite German hookah brands and products. Uh, I think or maybe just one or two. Okay, let's go two. Two, your, two of your favorite German hookah products. Where it says to start. Not imported, but German. K2. 
Case St. Mose. Okay. Ähm, fang du mal an, ich muss überlegen. One or two? That's difficult. So one. <lacht> Don't be a pussy, try it. That's boring. Let's say two. Oh, let's say two. Mose, Ian. For me personally. What? Ian. Uh, Eon, Ian. Uh, Aeon. Yeah. Eon. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how you say it. In that the... finger, the, it, it starts with A. Okay, yeah. we agree on it. <laughs> yes. Aeon. I'll say the same. 100%. Let's, let's go different way. <laughs> no. It's okay, just... okay. Then you can in say this. Emotion and uh, yeah. emotion. <laughs> uh, I would say for tobacco boats, Vandenberg. You know them? Ah, yes, for tobacco boats, of course, Vandenberg. Cool. It's, cool. it's, it's not just Hukak's product. Very, very yes. good product. Also, their tobacco is good. Yeah. Kismet, you know Kismet? Mm, we know Kismet very Kismet, well. Kismet, uh, X-Racha, X-Racha, X-Racha. X -Racha. Yeah. I also say X-Racha. Yeah. Freestyle, back in the days, it was freestyle. Ah? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, yeah, I see. Yeah, Vandenberg, yeah. did you try it yet? What? The Vandenberg? No, 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 not yet. It's really because the best. Because it's the funnest. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really great Yeah, funnel, maybe right? that's why. Because <laughs> it's a funnel. And in the opposite way... <laughs> what are the worst German hookah products and why? Um, Bacha. Bacha. And why? Uh, it's a top-notch product, very uh, cheap. Yeah, but people, people are sticking to it. Like, if you go to lounges, they wouldn't switch up anything because they would just stick, stick to the Bacha. It's just because you can't even order another setup, and it's easy to prepare for themselves. It's easy to to uh, order it at the lounge. That's the most uh, bad thing, or the the baddest thing. Okay. Yeah, for brands, it's like copying other brands, mm -hmm. and you really see like it's a copy. Like, why do you copy stuff? Everybody sees it, and that's also a bad thing. I heard uh, in the past that there were a lot of drama around Arif Hukas. Arif? Arif, Arif? Yeah, yeah. Ar Ar Arif is right. I'm not quite sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I heard a lot about the quality, that it's not really good. Uh, and it was like, he makes a model and then disappears for like some months, not posting anything. Uh, also, the customer support was uh, very bad from what I, what I heard. I don't know. I never bought one, so uh, I can only say what I heard. Okay. What is the German way of smoking hookahs? Except mentioning butchers. Because we all, we all know it. Then it's funnel with HMD. For the people who are more into... into yeah, the, for the niche people who like to enjoy hookah and most likely look at our blogs. Where do they buy tobacco in Germany? In kiosks or in uh, e-commerce? Online. Uh, yeah, I would say it's, online. It's mixed. Local stores. It's mixed. Yeah. It depends on the location in Germany. If you're like in Hanau, for example, you can go to Volker 7 and buy everything. It's, it's really a hookah store. It's not a kiosk, it's a hookah store or online shop with hookah store. These two type of uh, stores. Okay. What calls do they use? 25, 26 or 27? I think the majority... Coconut charcoal is not... 26 <laughs> or 27. Yeah. Majority 26. 25 is very Dead. rare in Germany. Mm -hmm. Majority 26 and the enthusiasts or some people 27. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What do you think? Is your community developed or developing or stagnating? Cool. Uh, I think in 2020 was the biggest step for, for um, uh, evolving, I would say. And uh, nowadays our community especially is, I think, evolving or improving their style of smoke, smoking. And uh, I think the majority is still stagnating. Yes. Do you I have some say? kind of community, not brand-based events? Like, hey, let's do a meetup or a gathering or something like that. Some shops, uh, like tasting stuff, tasting events. Yeah, but it's brand related. It's something that uh, comes okay. from the people. From the people? From the I would say, for example, Volk 7 or Nell, they but are it, the people because but they, they have also. Shops, so it's, it's, it's a little bit brand. Okay, but branded. they also have a. Yeah, yeah they also like. Branded with their shop, so 
they invite some brands and uh, everybody can come. I think Unel had 1,000 visitors. Yeah, something yeah. about that. Theo was also there uh, in Germany. Yes. Yes, Theo was there. Um, maybe we can uh, say that our community is uh, invited to our uh, meetups, like the F F line meetups. Yes. It's a kind of uh, our biggest supporters of our community, and uh, once in a year we're uh, inviting them to a meetup. There are like uh, 30 to 40 people, just really the base community, the, the main community of us, and uh, that is that kind of uh, meetup for our community. Right. What does your lounge scene need to be? On the European level or funnel and advanced, HMD or yeah, what funnel, do they need? Uh, at funnel least HMD. an HMD, uh, funnel HMD, and uh, maybe some Puka masters. They know how to pack. The main point is the mindset of the lounge uh, uh, owners. The yes. mindset of the lounge owners needs needs to have a change, to be more like we want to have quality hookers in our lounge and not that type of. Uh, Mainstream stuff and the mainstream stuff is like uh, on the weekends at the evening time There are many people wants just to meet up with a hooker and doesn't want to smoke good hooker It's just a hooker a random hooker with a random setup, and it's just like uh, We're having some puffs and that's it. We really liked uh, Alexis approach uh, in bubble lounge. Yeah, yes, but it's closed. Yeah, also. it's closed Yeah, the problem is the lounge owners don't want to spend money on the hookers most of the time, they just want to earn money and they don't want to spend money on new hookahs, new setups. Maybe and that's stuff. why their biggest income is not from hookahs but from drinks and bever other beverages. Kind yeah. of the problem, I think. Mm -hmm. yes. And okay, guys, let's recommend us free hookah bars in Germany which are really worth visiting. You may run. Wolke 7 or Cloud 7? Wolke 7, that's the name. Yeah, it's Wolke 7. Uh, These two for sure. And uh, there is a Midnight ben Lounge. Berlin. I didn't had a visit at the Midnight Lounge. I think it's in the eastern part of Germany. It's Chemnitz, right? Chemnitz. Yes. It's near Dresden and Leipzig. And uh, that should be a great bar. I was not there. I heard something about Vikings Berlin. Vikings yeah, yeah. Berlin. Vikings, Vikings in Berlin. Berlin uh, it was highly recommended. Russian yeah, style. I wasn't there, tobacco. but uh, yeah. I heard good things about it. And something in München? No, there's nothing. No, no, no in nothing. There's nothing in Munich. Munich is not even one lounge who has a only smoky. I, I, right? I was, I was there. They, they don't have, they don't. Own yeah, they don't have a lounge. Yeah. Yeah. If I you go to Munich, just take beer. And, uh, <laughs> I tried to find one, but it's not possible. No, some big cities. Don't really have hookah stuff or a big hookah scene. They have hookah lounges, but you can't go there to smoke. Okay, you have you free have to work more to get the lounges there. <laughs> the mindset is too difficult to change. By it's the way, why? 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 It's because of the uh, let's say the vast majority of lounges are run by Arabic people, or <laughs> it's one part of the of the story. I think the other part is uh, already what what you've said is like it's just a side job for them and um, they're more interested in earning money with anything, or in a, anything in, in terms of the hookah quality, and uh, yeah. Or maybe it's more cultural than enthusiastic approach. Yeah, I think. Yes. I have a good example. I think so. A positive example. Uh, there's a lounge in Kassel, it's called 14, and they had like the classic setups all over the years again with the aluminum foil, but it was really good to smoke like double apple and uh, grape mint. And last or two weeks ago, I wrote with him and he said to me like, what's this funnel, what's this HMD? And I will go there with uh, Daniel because he's also from Kassel and I will show him like some Blackburn, some dark leaf tobacco and he wants to adapt it to his lounge. And he asked for Blackburn double apple? No. <laughs> no, he's like really looking at my content and he says, I want to try this out and I want to adapt it to my lounge. I want to have it in my Great. lounge. And if this happens, it was like a, it would be the first time like you could have a funnel and HMD and dark plant in Kassel, which is really nice because we have like 20, 20 bars, maybe more. It's not a big city, but uh, you don't can really smoke a good hookah there. So you have to help him to in order to build up a place for you when your girlfriend is not satisfied with your hookah business, so you go there and smoke <laughs> double apple. 
<laughs> Alusha, you had something to say. I think the, the, the most complicated thing is to change the mindset of the owners of the lounges in Germany because it's like the cultural thing, the business thing. And uh, on the other hand, also the people don't want to have the high quality ones, the, the high quality hookers. They only want to have a good session with their friends. And that's it. And a good session for them is like a budget. That's enough for them. Never stop a running system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's the main phrase, so. I have final two questions. What problems does your hookah community face in Germany? We previously said 25 gram, uh, maybe increasing taxes TBD. every, every TBD. year, TPD, tobacco components removal. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, you, you, the 25, 25 grams and on top of that there is a raise of tobacco taxes uh, each year from now to 2026. Yes. And yes. since 2022 it uh, was a tax from molasses or something like that? Like additional tax for hookah tobacco in Germany? Yeah. Yes. Tobacco, yes. Uh, yes, you have per kilogram like every year, I think additional yes. 4 euro or something mm -hmm. per kilogram. So. Uh, every year from now to 2026, the tobacco in Germany gets more expensive. And maybe some people will stop smoking then. It's hard to... Ex to we have one to of the highest the prices for hookah tobacco in Czech Republic. So, yes. And it also rises every year and it uh, will rise again. So we know it. And you didn't have some kind of uh, practice in Germany, like constantly raising the tax? When I started, it was like... Frozen? I think... Uh, 1390 or 1490 yes. per 200 oh, grams, 90, yes, 30, something like that. And then in like six years, it only raised up to 1790, 1690. Yes, for the, the black leaf starting yeah. 21. Yes. Black leaf was 21, something like that. In the uh, end, but now, uh, Basdev was uh, 26 or 27. But now yeah. you have the huge change from 200 grams for 17 euro to uh, 25 it's grams for 4 euro or something like and, that, uh, so I, I spotted price with, doubled. I spotted it with Blackburn. Right now, 100 gram of Blackburn costs 17 euros and the 25 gram it's costs five, 5 euros. Yes. So, to make it uh, to 100, you will pay uh, 3 euros. or 4 euros extra. Yes, yes, 3 euros extra. And with and normal, Dark Side normal and other brands, it, you know, 200 grams, it will be like double. Yes, yes. it yeah. will be about uh, double the price. Yes. Yeah, so we can agree that that's the biggest uh, mm, challenge yes. ahead of you. Yes. We will see how many people will stop smoking. and But I think the main problem will be that uh, not many people will, will start. start. Yeah. I think the ones who are smoking right now in Germany... The younger generation. The most, most of the people will continue, but... I think the there barrier are to less start for the young starting. generation to start in the hooker branch. You know, guys, I think that a problem in Germany is that you don't have a proper knowledge base. Yeah, you a lot of you does Instagram, YouTube, and stuff, but nothing is written. When somebody is new to hookah, they will type to Google uh, how to smoke hookah and everything. But uh, it does not pop up the Instagram stuff, only just the YouTube videos. That's why, for example, I and my colleagues are writing blog sites, even these days when it's even dead. But uh, the people are searching via Google and they will find the information. So maybe they will start uh, smoking hookahs when you provide them with accurate uh, information they can find. Mm, I got your point. Yeah, totally. Maybe that's our next step to improve for the community. I will help you with the writing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just take your book and translate it. Yeah. It will be translated. <laughs> and I need German? some of no. other pictures of yours to the next book. English. Maybe. English. Uh, maybe Morris can tell us about the uh, other challenge um, who's in front of us in uh, 2024. There is something more coming for wholesalers. It's, track and trace. It's, it's called track and trace. Track and trace. And so it's even more challenging for the wholesalers to. But I think it's yeah. Uh, I think it's more challenging than uh, 25 uh, grams. In fact, it's uh, checking every part every, yeah. in every of single the, step of the distribution. Yes. From the raw tobacco. To, yeah. to the sell, uh, selling point. Yeah. So we need people to check it. We need uh, technique to Systems, make it. Yes. It takes time and money and everything, and it all will be uh, put to the customers yep. to pay the yes. price for it. And 
Even right now with the new taxes, the margin is already shrinked very much because um, uh, with the 25 grams, there is no high profit margin uh, for the tobacco. Okay, guys, let's do baking, making shoes or something like that, because uh, it's not profitable anymore. <laughs> we'll okay. see. We'll I see. hope. Let's end with some positive things. Mm -hmm. If you could be profits, what is the future of our industry and your professions as well? That is a question we ask ourselves every day, I would say. <laughs> Because you never know what the law has in the bag. You never know what happens next year. Maybe next year they say five grams, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's hard to say. I hope the hookah community is strong in Germany, also in the future. I hope uh, some brands will survive everything. The strongest brands, like for example, Moser will be surviving it for sure. But uh, yeah. I hope the people will still keep enjoying hookah. Maybe we will have to focus more on foreign markets. It's hard to say from now. And also, maybe there is an um, upcoming problem with the flavored molasses and flavored tobacco. I say positive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we're looking forward to anything new in the market, anything uh, like Mose, Emotion, Case, Ian, and that kind of uh, products on the German market especially, and also on the uh, international market like Russia. Yeah. We hope the best for our community, we hope the best for ourselves, for our hobby. Guys, <laughs> you've ended positively. That's the best option we can get here. Mm -hmm. And I'm... I have to thank you, I want to thank you, that you came here to Czech Republic and spent great time with us during this interview and Same. after that on meet and greet. I personally want to thank you, you Alyosha, Yannick, Moritz and your friends to support you. Same. And after this show, let's pump it up, try your spheres, your breezes, your grits and people here in Czech Republic are really want to speak with you and enjoy your time. So be open, let's enjoy this night. And I want uh, again to thank you, our audience, which is thank here you. and support us during our shows. And uh, of course, our sponsors, which is Shanti, KVR, Coco Loco and Tio for making this event to be held here. Ah, Thanks me. for having us. Thanks, yeah, thank thank you, you very much, I appreciate it. Let's uh, give uh, yourself a decent clap. Also for you, also for you, also for you. Thank you, Shane. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of the night. Díky moc, že jste přišli. Pojďme si to tady užít. Kluci jsou tu jenom pro vás. Thank you. You're welcome.